Today we're going to talk about preparing your kale for your smoothies. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa West and welcome to Smoothie Saturdays. Today's Smoothie Saturday was born out of some feedback that I got from one of my blog posts. And it was a username, so I don't have his exact name. But he says, I'm a 56 year old man who does not take very good care of himself but I'm trying. As part of a weight loss program, I'm using a protein powder from Costco. And lately I've been freezing fruit and making my own smoothies with the powder, frozen fruit and orange juice. Tonight I thought I'd add some veggies to it and put in some frozen spinach. It was pretty good and I'm sure more beneficial than fruit only. I've heard that kale was a very good vegetable to use. When I read up on it, I discovered that steam kale was better than raw kale. How would it be if I steamed the kale and then froze it for later use in my smoothies? So, okay, first of all, what I wanna say is this is where we enter the category of so much confusing information out there that people throw their hands up in the air and give up. <laughs> and please don't do that. <laughs> Ultimately, kale is incredibly nutritious and we've covered off the nutritional value of kale in several of our previous videos. I did do a lot of research on this and came up and it seems that the debate is actually a 50-50 split. I'll link to a blog post that I found on this um, that was pretty interesting but the cancer studies for example show that raw kale is more beneficial than cooked and the cholesterol studies, for example, show that um, steamed kale is more beneficial than raw. So <laughs> it just really depends on the study and what they set out to prove. And I think if you read T. Colin Campbell's mo rec most recent book, Whole, Rethinking the Science of Nutrition, you'll see that nutritional studies are kind of flawed in a way and the way they get funding for their research and you know they are human beings doing research and they set out with a hypothesis and then they prove a certain hypothesis you know so it's all you know <laughs> it's all human beings doing research so don't give up or throw in the towel if you're eating kale five stars for you and there are benefits to having raw kale and there are benefits to having cooked kale and gold stars. So that being said, I do really like the idea of steaming kale, freezing it and using it for later use. I think this is a fantastic alternative to frozen fruit to keeping your smoothies cold. So let's get into some reasons why you might want to steam your kale and how to prepare it for easy future use in your smoothies. First of all, I do actually want to point you to some contraindications for kale. If you're taking blood thinning medications, kale might not be the best idea for you because kale promotes clotting. The greens contain oxalates, which in lab tests have been associated also with kidney stones and some gallstones. So do check with your medical doctor before you go and consume tons of kale. I will say also, as somebody who loves her kale chips and has been known to sit down to an entire head of kale chips at a time, <laughs> Kale can be hard on your digestive system if you eat that much raw in a whole sitting. It can cause bloating, gas, tummy aches, and raw if you eat it, and cramping if you eat it raw. In that respect, you could get away with eating more steamed in one setting. So the life lesson is go easy on kale in your smoothie juicing, juicing <laughs> smoothies, juices, and salads, and kale. <laughs> if you do it in one serving, uh, kale chips in uh, your servings at one sitting. Also, kale contains a compound that can suppress thyroid function in certain people. Some say that cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli, cauliflower, collards, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, mustard greens, kohlrabi, turnips, and kale should always be cooked because they can disrupt thyroid hormone production. They do this by blocking thyroid 
peroxidase and disrupting messages that are sent across the membranes of thyroid cells and cooking these vegetables greatly reduces these negative effects. So if you have thyroid issues, it might be a good idea for you to cook your cruciferous vegetables by lightly steaming your, your greens. Other reasons for lightly steaming your leafy greens is that it starts the digestive process for you. Lightly steaming breaks down the cellular structures of vegetables and greatly increases the digestibility and nutrient absorptions of nutrients in vegetables, according to the You Should Cook Your Veggies camp. Now, I know the raw camp has a totally different opinion on this. So this is where people, I know, get frustrated by all the information out there. So one of the main benefits of lightly steaming your greens is that you will destroy your, the toxins and microorganisms in them. And so you won't be exposed to things like, what's that thing that you get, Tim? Like when you eat raw meat and the E. coli. <laughs> okay. So pathogenic bacteria will be c killed when exposed to heat. So this is a great reason why to steam your veggies to kill off all that bacteria. So let's look at how we're going to do this. So I had some collards and kale that I needed to use up before my brand new box from Derm Organics came tonight. And they were looking a little, you know, not too vibrant. They were looking a little <laughs> limp, actually. So it was a great idea to use them up. And I wouldn't have thrown them through my juicer. Actually, I wouldn't have even put them in my blender at this point. They're just looking too limp. But to steam them and use them up like that and to do what I'm going to do with them now was great. So what we're going to be making are these green ice cubes. How fantastic is that? Okay. So um, what I did was I washed them really well and then I chopped them up, not small at all. I just roughly chopped them up and I put them in this big soup pot. And when I started, it was like this. And then I just put enough water to cover the bottom. And I set it to high. And I got that water boiling. And then it broke that all down. And it went down to like this. So I just steamed it down enough so that it broke down, essentially, so that it, it went down. And, and it really only took a very minimal amount of time so that it came down. And then what we're going to do, you can see the water is very green too. There's a lot of minerals and antioxidants in that water. So we're actually going to use that water too because it's going to help us as we blend that. So what we're going to do is take this lightly steamed kale and I also had Swiss chard as well. So I just combined it because I needed to use it up. We're going to put it in our blender and the water that's in here as well is going to help us help the blender. And we're going to blend that up. Okay, so we blended this into a nice fine liquid. And then what you're going to do is just pour it into ice cube trays. It's a little goopy, but it all works out, you can see, <laughs> from my finished product, which worked better than my ice cream last week. <laughs> Actually, I'll have you know, I ate all that ice cream. It was delicious. We, we stuck it back in the freezer, and it was really yummy. I ate it all. Okay, so you'll put all of that in, and you stick that in the freezer. And then what you end up with is these green ice cubes and you can stick them. These were beet greens that I needed to use up. So often when you get your um, your farm shares or your organic boxes, you'll get greens that look like they need to be used right away or it's, they're not going to last. Go ahead and do this and you'll get to use them up. You get the maximum benefit out of them. You can stick them in your smoothies. So this means no more greens ending up in the compost bin. You get to get the maximum benefit out of all your greens. So I hope you enjoyed this um, <laughs> video. <laughs> and I leave your comments below. I look forward to your feedback. OK, PS, Tim wanted to know what to do with these ugly little ice cubes. <laughs> So we, you stick them in your smoothies in the winter when you don't have good greens. So you'll stick these in the freezer now. Save them up for the winter when you can't get good greens, when there's no kale at the grocery store. And then you can have greens in your smoothies. And they'll keep your smoothies nice and cold. Isn't that a great idea?
<laughs> Finding a great yoga class is becoming more costly and difficult. Now there's a better way to self-improvement in the privacy of your own home. Visit Dr. Melissa West at melissawest.com and start getting free weekly online videos. Real yoga for real people.